obviously the milieu helps too in shaping Manny Cole's character yeah. and how uh, vast his experience goes and how, how his mind is far more expansive than the rest of the other characters. Um, one of the things about that is, is that he was talking about how, well, corporate America has the guise of of uh, having ethics and everything, or at least they propound that they do. It is really no worse than the organization of Big Frank. And he was talking about, you know, blue collar versus white collar crime. And uh, so that gives, that shows that Manny Cole is politically inclined as, as opposed to the three brothers. It also, uh, Manny Cole is also clearly not you in a lot of ways because he has more a moral things that go with him longer in his life whereas you drop that in your youth well yeah Manny Cole is also the Manny Cole of this book is also slightly different than the Manny Cole of Tumbleweeds and the Manny Cole of A Norwegian in the Family is different still because they're in different time frames and Initially, I was going to have more of Manny looking back on the events of Tumbleweeds. But as, as I wrote the Vincetti Brothers, I was like, no, because uh, Manny is still a, a teenager when this book starts. He's going to be more interested in, or maybe he's 12 uh, when it starts. Um, he's going to be more focused on what happened here or there. And uh, instead, while Tumbleweeds is about what directly happens to Manny, we meet Manny's family in that book. Uh, we really don't find out much more about his personal life. Manny Cole uh, is basically uh, just the teller of the book uh, of, of the, or the, the tale of the Vincettis and, and the thing around them. Manny Cole does wax in and out of uh, uh, intensity and, and how much he is involved in the book. But there are certainly things that, you know, well, how could he know about what happened with Big Frank and whatnot. And we find out later on, or we, uh, we get hints that he's a reporter in this book and he's looking back and he may have researched these things. By the end of the quartet, we find out how he actually knows a lot of these things. And also too, he says in, in, in the book that it is, is that it is a novel. I mean, he acknowledges that it is that it's a novel, that he's in a, a novel to a certain degree. He He thinks it's a novel that he's writing or he's thinking about. And then he, he As opposed has... to that charlatan Dan Schneider, as yeah. he calls him. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he, thinks, he, he thinks he thinks he thinks he wrote tumbleweeds too. Yeah, and he, he pays does. a price for that. In a Norwegian in the family, he pays a price for that uh, that insolence. <laughs> <laughs> it's good you were able to write his wrongs. Um, one of the things too about him is that's the whole metafictional quality about him. Uh, about the book, I should say. And uh, he's able to go in and out of things. One of the things I noticed, though, is that many of the chapters end similar to Tumbleweeds, almost like uh, the end of a, a sonnet, very poetically. Yeah. There's always a, a turn of phrase or something that deepens what came before, similar to how the chapters begin, where there's a, a, a thought that's pondered on that leads into the rest of the chapter and deepens it. You have you have to have that. I. I... You know, I'm reading, for example, I picked, uh, Jessica and I went uh, this weekend to a, a little arts fair at a town, and I, I got this Western writer, and he's got a book, and I'm going to probably end up reviewing it. It's a solid book, but it has one of those, it has those beginning and ends of chapters where, you know, Bill walk to the barn kind of thing. And uh, when you're doing something, I always feel that uh, there's a natural pause at the end. And the beginnings and, and ends of chapters to me are like enjambment in the beginning and end of a poem. You have to draw that reader back. You can't be so self-indulgent in your artsy intent that you don't realize that you're communicating. And you have to want to draw something back. So if you have a poetic image and then you start the next chapter and you have something deeper, you're going, you're, you're going to bridge that natural pause there and, and draw them someone back into it. You can have... Uh, uh, relative lulls here and there in, in the book when someone is just walking down the street or whatnot and you have a, a couple of paragraphs talking, or, well, he went to the party and he saw Joni and they went and danced or whatnot. But you you can't, you shouldn't, it, I don't think, do that at the beginnings of chapters because people are going to look at this and go, eh. You know, if I look, and I'm just, I'm just going to randomly go to here in my, in my, uh, 
my watch call. Okay, so I'm at chapter 49, page 659 in the Vincetti Brothers. And I, I just randomly, this was the next chapter when I had the thing up. So I start off, it says, No air could herald what a rare thing, such as the calamity that occurred in Gino Vincetti's life, could do to people not directly involved in the thing. Yet like animals that can sense an earthquake hours before it hits, or the buildup of ions in an air before a major thunderstorm hits, even the somewhat most clueless of individuals can often subtly detect when things are askew. And, and so... Uh, I, I I could probably have written that plainly in just a sentence, but you know, no air could herald what a rare thing is poetic. Even though there's not really any, the word herald is probably the most poetic word there. But since I'm talking about such a dope as Gino Vincetti, it elevates Gino because we're focusing on on, on Gino here, uh, and so that that invites a reader in to say, oh, that was interesting. You. The word choices you use in poetry or even in prose, you want to have that effect like Velcro, that something sticks. If you get in the first couple of sentences, three or four little Velcro things that, that that's for whatever reason, forces a reader to go on. That's what you want. Because once the narrative picks up, uh, maybe a couple of paragraphs later, you'll be into it. So that's, that's it seems one of the you're conservative, though, uh, the more I read later books, as opposed to Tumbleweed, which was... Uh, especially in the Manny chapters, many uh, uh, paragraphs and dialogues had tons of poetic devices in them, as opposed to Vincetti, which has some here or there a nice twist of phrase, but is spoken more plainly. 